Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If we haven't even met before, I'm gonna stick on teeth. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If we haven't even met before, my name is Shiv. Hello for coming back, then welcome. In today's video, I am doing this look for you right here using the Revolution Pro Ultimate Artist Palette. I am going to be doing a review of this tutorial. There will be a blog post review. So if you want to know kind of like my full thoughts, if I missed anything in the video, check out the blog post. If you want to see more of like this look, then obviously watch this video, which we're doing right now. But yeah, I would love to show you how to create this makeup look. I experimented with some greys and silvers which are a little bit out of my comfort zone they're not my favorite tones but I'm absolutely obsessed with how this looks I feel like it looks very like pretty but grungy but editorial and it's just all sorts of things happening at the same time when I'm into it so if you'd like to see how to create this makeup look what my thoughts are on the palette then please carry on watching before you do please give this video a big thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already check me out on Instagram I'd really appreciate it and let's just carry on with the video so this is the palette right here. This is the Revolution Pro Ultimate Artist Palette and it looks like this. Boom. So what you get in the palette, you get four like face powders, you get a contour, a bronzer and like it's just called dark but I'm guessing it's like a dark bronzer. You get a highlighter shade, you also get four blushes so you get a baby pink one, a normal kind of pink one, you get a coral shade which is very very bright, you get a red shade as well which to be honest you could also just use as eyeshadows if you wanted to. Then on the other side it comes with a plastic sheet in the middle which I quite like because it separates both sides from like spilling over in travel. So on the other side, I'm gonna hold it without digging my fingers into anything, you get a set of eight iconic shades so you have white which is a shimmer black which is a matte neutral which is a matte it's like a warm brown kind of color which i feel like a lot of people will like you get a shimmery navy color a gold a silver and a brown the brown by the way is gorgeous i swatched it earlier when i was taking my blog post photos and it is divine and then you also get an aubergine shade which is like a warm purpley brown then you get brights so you have four shades you've got blue uv yellow uv orange uv pink and UV red. Now I swatched the UV pink and it is bright, let me tell you that. You also get em emerald which is a shimmer co cobalt and then purple as well and then underneath you have eight lip shades right here which lips lipstick in a pan I mean this is more of you're just kind of wanting everything in one palette I don't really tend to use lipsticks in a pan myself however they do look really pretty so you get eight shades ranging from dark to more lighter colors I think in my look I'm going to do sort of like a 90s lip but with a gloss so I'm going to do brown and then the new color as like an ombre which is quite cool and obviously you can always custom mix your shades if you want to as well so let's just dive into the palette when I was looking at this and kind of setting up my desk on what shades I wanted to use I was like like where do you even start do you know what I mean <laughs> I don't know if it's just like the layout of the palette or if it's like I don't know like just loads of colors but I guess I do have other palettes that have loads of shades in but I just couldn't figure out for the life of me what I wanted to do I'm like do I want to use all the UV shades but I want to test out the shimmers for once because I always test out the mattes and leave the shimmers alone do I want to do a smoky eye do I want to do a halo eye do I want to do something really creative I don't know but I settled on I'm going to do a kind of old school fashioned smoky eye with a twist I'm going to put some gems on this stuff and jazz it up so i'm going to use the shade silver black white neutral some of these kind of shades and then i'm going to do blue on the lower lash line so i'm going to use navy and cobalt on the lower lash line use the lips i'm not going to use the uv pink shades in this video however leave a comment down below and let me know if you want me to do a video using these kind of shades as well give me an idea of what kind of colors you want me to try out and i will definitely get around that for you and then i'll be using the face set as well so let's just dive straight in so this video will be heavily revolution focused just because when I tend to test out a product from a brand I like to kind of incorporate whatever I have else from that brand in the video I just feel like it flows better that's just my personal opinion obviously for the rest of the makeup tutorial use whatever you want to use you do you so I'm going to take the revolution pro dark brown brow pencil I have used this before I did like it I remember it being a little bit too warm however as you can tell from my very dark brows I have tinted my brows yesterday so I feel like I can make this work the formula itself is actually really nice so i'm going to go ahead and fill in my eyebrows i am going to do one eye on the screen and one eye off camera so i'm going to look a little bit crazy by the end of this so i'm just going to start by i need a mirror i am not prepared so i found a little compact just to use as a mirror 
Okay, I'm just gonna start by brushing my eyebrows up. And then I'm gonna start by filling in the brow, obviously as they are, are tinted. I don't really have to fill them in too much. I've been loving a little bit more of a sort of natural, kind of fluffier looking brow lately. My eyebrow hairs naturally are quite thick, so I tried to do soap brows the other day, it didn't turn out the best, but I've been liking just using a little bit less product in my brows and kind of just seeing like the natural kind of hairs in them and stuff. I just quite like the way it looks. I used to like a very like dish dish, like very kind of the scouse brow if you remember that kind of expression. So I'm just gonna do like hair like strokes just to fill in the sparse areas. The sparse areas on my brows are like right in the arch right here. Okay, we have a very dark brows today. To prime the lids, I'm gonna take the Revolution Conceal and Define Conceal it in the shade C4. I'm just gonna do a dollop of this onto my eye. Do I wanna put tape down? Do I want to put tape down? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm gonna take some sellotape real quick. Okay, I'm just gonna pop some tape on the outer corner of my eye so I have that kind of nice sharp edge to the look. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this brush right here from Morphe, this is the M224 and I'm just going to start by packing out the concealer all across the lid and then using kind of the side of the brush just to carve out the brow a little bit. Okay, because I don't want to do any crazy colour or anything like that, I just want to smoke it out. I'm going to set the base a little bit. This concealer does kind of set down, but just to make sure it's not like sticking to the shadow and going patchy or anything like that. I'm going to take the Primark Bake It Setting Powder. This is in the shade Nude. I'm just going to take a little bit of that on this Loella Cosmetics Eye Candy Emily brush. Just tapping off the excess, making sure there's no creasing. And then I'm just gonna tap this across the lid, just focusing on kind of like the crease and the upper crease area, just so the eyeshadow doesn't like skip when we're blending. I think I much prefer a wet kind of base, like the P. Louise one or concealer, that kind of thing, when I'm doing like a really creative, colorful look, because you can make the shadows really intense. But when I wanna do something a little bit smoky, I do prefer to set it. Okay. I should have time. Hopefully this piece of tape doesn't lift too much. We can always fix it, don't you worry. So now let's jump into the palette. So I'm gonna take the shade Neutral, which is this one right here, which I guess is the main transition shade in the palette. It's like the kind of like warm, dark beigey brown. I don't have to describe it. I'm gonna take it on a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush. And rather than going at darkest to lightest, I'm gonna go old school method and just starting with your transition. So I'm just going into the shade Neutral, picking up a bunch of product definitely swirl my brush too much because there is fallout everywhere but that was my fault with the brush so I'm tapping off the excess just so you don't go in with too much product and then I'm just going to start by lightly buffing this through the crease right to the inner corner there we go and I'm just really really blending it out every single step of this I want to make sure is as blended as possible I don't want to move on to the next step until I'm happy with this one and make sure it's really really nice and blended making sure there's kind of enough on the inner section of the crease just so when we look forward it all looks cohesive I have a real drive at the moment to create videos which I'm super happy about I'm thinking about doing TikTok videos because I was binge watching at them last night I was like oh my god that looks so much fun and you can do like actual music to it that doesn't get copyrighted and like sing along to it and stuff. I might not do it for like YouTube because I film Instagram at the same time and it might be a bit too much trying to film through three different videos. However, I might do it like when I get ready to go out or something. Not like go out much, but you know what I mean. Let me know. I do have a TikTok account. I can't remember what my username is. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. Don't have any followers. I'm not following anyone as far as I'm aware. I might follow like maybe two people last night. That's a lie. But yeah, definitely follow me on there. I have not posted at this moment in time, but thinking about doing it. So let me know like you would like to see it. Tape is definitely lifting. Okay, then I'm gonna take a MAC 217 brush. I am going to take, there's not really like another like transition shade I want to use. I would use aubergine, but I want to use more like silvery colors. So I'm gonna take the contour shade right here. And I'm just gonna put that into the crease just to kind of like add some different tones to the look. 
I'm just kind of putting that through the crease as well. This is just to add some kind of depth and dimension and just add different layers to the look. Because we're using like a warm shade and a cool shade, it'll look nice and interesting. Then I'm going to switch back to that neutral shade and just blend some more over the top of that. Now I'm going to switch to using this black shade right here. I haven't used a black eyeshadow in like, I can't even remember the last time I used a black eyeshadow. But I'm going to take this on my Loella Cosmetics Blend Me Beautiful Betty brush. It's quite a stiff blending brush, which is quite good for like focused application. So I'm really going to focus this just in like the outer kind of section of the eye. Hopefully this tape will create a nice sharp edge if not we can clean it up with a cotton bud later on So I'm just gonna start patting it on and then slowly blending it out Sun, if you wanna come through, through, through. Oh, yeah. That is a good black I'm just gonna really take my time just to blend this into the rest of the eye. I don't want it to go too far across, but I am just making sure it's really well blended the best I can get it, definitely for a black eyeshadow. We can make love like a night of God. I just match my words to my Okay, now I'm just taking that contour shade again on a MAC 217, the same brush we used before, and I'm just gonna start by blending this out. This is going to be a little bit of a long process, but just have patience and I promise it will look great at the end. I say that I have never done this look before, but that's why I always feel like you just need to persist. Persistence is key. Here we go, another one of Siobhan's random inspiring makeup related, life related speeches. <laughs> Then I'm going to go back to the brush with the black on it and just add some more to make sure it's nice and intense and just keep blending this out. I might do this kind of process a few times until I'm happy with it. Doing little circular motions. I now want to put a base down for the silver shadow. So I'm going to take the Sigma Wicked Gel Eyeliner and just a flat synthetic brush. This is a new one. Look at that. Here we go. So I'm just going to load up my brush with the gel liner. And then just pop this. And then just pop this all over the lid. Not right to the edge. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap just where the black shadow is, but we are going to re pop on the black shadow after. Now I'm going to take a MAC 239 brush and I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of some skincare spray, setting spray will do. This is the CBD Essence Spray from Revolution, just to make it a little bit damp. And then I'm going to take the silver shade right here, I don't know if you can sort of see how silvery, silvery that is on camera, just a true kind of shimmery silver, silver shade really loaded up my brush and then I'm just going to pop this on top of that black base and you just see how much more like intense and like I don't know it just looks so much nicer on top of the base bring that all across the eye making sure all of the black eyeliner is covered and I'm starting to go like side to side and little wiggling motions just at the edge of the black liner This actually looks really nice. I don't know if it's because I've got a lot of black eyeshadow on, but I'm never usually a fan of silvers. However, this is, this is proving okay. I want to do something a little bit out of my comfort zone by using silver shadow, because if you've noticed, I never really use it. And I'm just going to start by buffing the edge of this. I don't want it to be like a cut crease. I want it to be a little bit more smoky. A bit grungy looking actually. And then just put it over to the edge, leaving that space blank because I'm gonna go re-go in with the black shadow in just a moment. I'm just taking the brush, I'm not taking any more silver shadow, really pushing it into the eye, kind of like buffing it 
Look at the creases, kind of smoky. I like this. Oh, smoky, sultry, sexy. <laughs> Once I'm happy with that step, I'm just gonna go back to the black shadow, making sure that tape is as secure as I can possibly get it at this stage. It has definitely slid around a little bit. I'm just going to pack some more on the outer corner so it's really nice and dark, and then just kind of buff it against where that silver kind of meets the outer edge. I really like this. Next I am going to do my liner and I'm going to take the Revolution Renaissance Flick liner pen of course if you watch my videos already you know I absolutely love this it's amazing give it a shake and I'm just going to pop on a wing just following where the tape goes up and then bringing it to where the black kind of ends so let's go. I'm just going to start by lining the lash line okay let's peel off this tape see the damage oh, yes for the lower lash line i'm going to do some blue so i'm going to pop some blue through the waterline just so it kind of blends well together this is the mua intense color eyeliner pencil in the shade royal blue i don't know if you can get this anymore but just use any blue eyeliner i will link an alternative below if you can't find this if not have a look in Superdrug, any cheap blue liner will do so i'm just going to pop that Oh, that feels scratchy for some reason. It's a bit of plastic on it. Okay, I'm just going to run this all across that waterline, really loading it up there. So, and then I'm actually just going to run this kind of like along the lower lash line and try and really get it between the lashes. Just so when you put the shadow on, it just really kind of flows well together and is super smoky. You could be the muse to my passion. I'm loving this look and I really wasn't thinking that, you know, a silvery, cool toned, smoky eye would be my thing, but there we go. So I'm going to start off by taking this shade here, which is called Cobalt, and it is a blue. Just a kind of mid-toned to darkish blue. And I am going to take this on a Eek Show brush. And I'm just going to begin by like pressing this under the lower lash line just so i don't get loads of shadow in my eye i find if i go side to side straight away it goes all onto my eyeball and to avoid that at all costs i'm just pressing this underneath i'm not being afraid to like go quite far down okay and now it's on there i'm just gonna go side to side and really kind of work that into the lower lash line i want as little kind of skin like gaps as possible okay so now we've got that kind of base for the shimmer down. I'm now going to take the shade navy which is a shimmery navy blue. I'm just going to overlap this shade. Now I'm going to highlight the inner corner of my eye using the white shade which is a shimmer. I don't really know if this is going to show up or not but I'm going to give it a go and I'm taking it on a pencil brush. I kind of want to pull in my liner a little bit. So I'm going to take the Revolution liner again. And I'm just going to pull in the liner just a little bit. So it looks a little bit more like cat eye. Now I'm going to curl my lashes. These are just the Superdrug Rose Gold Eyelash Curlers. And then for mascara, I'm taking the Revolution Blowout High Volume Mascara with Cannabis Sativa. I'm going to load up my lashes with that. As I've put on my mascara, I can see that the gap of my upper lash line is really showing through. So I'm going to take a black pencil liner. This one is the Jordana Easy Liner for Eyes, but any black liner will do. And I'm just going to tight line my upper waterline. If you look straight down to a mirror, it's much easier. I'm going to put on my lashes off screen as always. These are the Peaches and Cream number 26 lashes. I have used them before. I'm going to pop my lashes on, come back with both eyes on, and then we'll move on to the face. So we are back with the eyes done. Now it's time to move on to the face. So I'm going to start off by taking my Revolution CBD Nourishing Essence Spray just to kind of give the skin a little bit of a refresh before we carry on with the primer and foundation, all that kind of good stuff. 
Now I'm taking my Revolution Pro Hydra Matte Primer. This is a hydrating primer serum with collagen and antioxidants, which I'm super excited to use. Never tried this before. I love the Goddess Glow Primer, so I'm sure that I'm really gonna like this. Okay, so it has a really nice like glass-like bottle. I'm just gonna squeeze some of this out. And then I'm just gonna smooth this all across the face. It feels super moisturizing as well. Super smoothing. Mm, I really like the feel of this primer. It's super smoothing and I wasn't expecting it to be. I was almost expecting it to be like really silicone-y and kind of like cling to dry patches, but that's the complete opposite of this. Really enjoy this. Now I'm just going to take my Revolution Matte Base Pure Blurring Full Coverage Foundation in the shade F7. This is the darkest Revolution foundation I have. I also have just fake tan. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I'm going to pop this all over. It's probably not going to be an exact match, but we're going to make it work, okay, people? I'm going to pop that all over the skin and then blend it in so it's nice and flawless. I really like this foundation actually. It's really growing on me. Next up, I'm gonna go back in with the concealer we used earlier to conceal my face. I'm gonna go in on my chin, under the eyes, forehead, and that kind of thing. Now I'm going to blend it in using my beauty sponge. This is the Spicy Choco Tear Blend Sponge. Dabbing that into the skin. Now I'm going to go ahead and set this into place just using a little bit of the Primark setting powder that I used earlier on the eye. Now we're looking super ghostly, we're going to do some bronzing. So I'm going to go back to the Ultimate Artist book and I'm going to trial out this bronze shade right here, which I'm not going to lie, it looks very intense. I'm a little bit scared of it, but we're going to see how it goes. Okay, I'm just taking the same brush I used for my face powder and I'm just very delicately dipping into this. I have a feeling it's going to be very intense. I'm a little bit nervous, not going to lie. Just tapping off the excess and then I'm going to just add a little bit of this onto my face. She gives quite a nice colour, you know, you just have to be dip very, very lightly. You could be the hmm. I actually really like that, you know, it hasn't turned out too intense at all. I judged it too soon. For blush, I'm gonna take the shade pink, which is this pink shade right here. See how this goes? I'm taking it on a Loella Cosmetics Contour Diva Katie brush. Ooh, that is pink my head. I'm just gonna keep kind of blending it out and hoping we can make it work. Oh no. Oh no. I'm just gonna use the same brush and just keep trying to blend this out because that is a situation. I'm just gonna take the brush that I use for my bronzer and just kind of go over it a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna set the face using the Revolution CBD Nourishing Essence Spray. Just I feel like my skin could use a little bit of life to it. I'm just gonna spritz my highlighter brush, which is the Zoeva 134 Luxe Powder Fusion Brush with a little bit of the skincare spray just to kind of dampen it a little bit. Hopefully it makes the highlighter more intense. And now I'm gonna take the shade Light from the powders, which is the highlighter shade in the palette. When I swatched it, it didn't look that blinding, but hopefully it kind of looks somewhat illuminating on the cheeks. Hmm, okay, I'm not gonna lie, it's not really doing much. Definitely adding like a sheen to the face, but I don't know if I wanna say blinding or anything. I don't even know, it looks pretty on camera. I'm just gonna pop some mascara on my lower lashes. For lips, we're gonna have a little bit of a concoction. So I'm gonna start off by using Max Spice Lip Pencil. I'm just gonna outline my lips, slightly overline them a little bit. Then 
for lips, we're going to use one of the lipsticks from the palette. So the only thing I'll just say about this that I can think of as like a negative is that when you're using the shadows, some of the shadows go into the lipsticks, which is a bit annoying. I feel like this section here should have had like another sort of plastic separator because it is a really cool concept, but I just feel like all the shadows are going to go into the lipsticks and they already started to have like started to pick up little bits of fluff and stuff. The first shade that I'm going to take is the shade brown and I'm going to use that around the outer kind of section of my lips. We're going to do a little bit of an ombre. I'm going to switch over and take the shade Nude to use in the centre of my lip and I'm going to blend it together using my lip brush. This is the Loella Cosmetics Luscious Lips Lily Brush just to mention. I just realised that I've completely forgotten about the gems because of course it's not like part of my normal makeup routine. So I've got these gems from Poundland. I'm going to jazz up my look a little bit. I think I'm going to put like three in each kind of like inner corner and then we'll go from there and just see what happens. So I'm going to pop some gems on. I'm literally just going to take a little bit of the Superdrug Lash Glue, do a dot where I want the gem and then I'm going to pop it on with a tweezer. <laughs> Oh shit, that's way too much lash goo. Okay, so that went disastrously wrong, but I'm just gonna continue and hope it doesn't happen again. I feel like we can salvage this. I actually really like that. I'm just gonna leave it because I feel like I wouldn't know where to place them on this side of my eyes, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, and this is the finished makeup look. I actually love it. I didn't think I would love it this much considering it's silver and I really don't get along with like silver or gray eyeshadows. I always kind of have it in my head that they wash my eyes out, which they do a little bit. My eyes definitely don't look as green as per usual if I was to use like a purple or like a burgundy shade. However, feeling it, liking the gems, a little bit experimental. It's 2020, Euphoria makeup look was kind of in 2019, but I never did one, so I'm incorporating some gems. <laughs> Always late to the bandwagon over on this channel, but I really hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you did, definitely give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'm just gonna touch on the palette quickly. So this palette is really good. It does have a few kind of pros and cons to it, just to bear in mind. I absolutely love the packaging first off. I think the packaging is really nice. It feels like good quality, like it's not gonna break or anything, and it's nice and compact as well. Well, considering how much is in it. When you actually open the book, I would say the highlighter itself doesn't really show up too much. It's not the most blinding highlight in the world. I mean, you can definitely see it. So if you're more into sort of like a natural highlight, then this may be for you, but it's definitely not something that's gonna like blind you, which I personally love. The bronzer I was actually pleasantly surprised with. I didn't realize that it would actually give like kind of like a nice, like a nice bronze, it wasn't too intense and I actually thought that it was gonna be like way too pigmented so that was quite a nice surprise and I feel like you could build it up if you wanted to. The blush was very intense, go in with a light hand with this blush as you can tell maybe, I can't really tell, on camera it kind of washes me out a little bit. The shadows, amazing, I'm really really impressed with them, don't have a fault to say about the shadows at all. Lipsticks are lovely, I just wish that I had like an extra protector for the lipstick because the shadows are going to start to go in them but I do really like it and I feel like you can create like a nice little ombre kind of vibe. The plum red shade here would look really nice with the pink in the middle per se. Oh I could do like a pink monotone look, let me know in the comments down below if you've watched it this far, if you would like to see that and I'll get around to but so yeah, definitely a big thumbs up from me. I love Revolution, you guys know I do. This video is not sponsored or anything like that. I did receive the palette in PR, but I'm not paid to say anything that I even know I'm making this video. So there you go, that's my thoughts on that. And thank you so much for watching. Check out my blog post review of the palette. It'll be in the description box below. Follow me on Instagram, I'd really appreciate it. And I shall see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching, bye. So as I, mm. I didn't keep my feet rush out. Damn it. Okay, I am, I'm just, I'm gonna take the primer and I should like this and I'm just gonna start like patting up by taking the shade here which is cool cool you cute. Feels super moist. This is the spicy choco tip. Using my primer make it cosmetics contour DV. Hopefully it makes the highlighter more intense. Three millimeter adhesive gems that I'm just in.